probably all know Felix Gaz. He's been um, the executive director of the stakeholder forum for up until December. No, September. September. But for 20 years and has been very instrumental in actually building civil society movements <coughs> that, that have an impact on broader social policy and bringing people together and, and helping people work effectively to make the kind of transformative change that we need. So I'm, I'm glad that he's here. Welcome, Felix. Thank you. Give us a little sense of what we're up against. Yeah, I was asked to also give a little bit of a history because um, one of the things I did with Maurice Strong, who was the Secretary General of the Stockholm Conference in 72 and the Rio Conference in 92, was to do a book of the last 40, hit, uh, 40 years. It's called Only One Earth, and it gives you a, an idea of possibly you know, why we've had some problems in addressing sustainable development at the global level. And just going back very quickly to 72, you know, one of the uh, things that people perhaps forget, it was the first conference the Chinese government attended as a member of the UN. And in fact, we found a copy of their first submission to a UN conference. So we published uh, the Chinese contribution to the Stockholm Declaration, which talks about American imperialism and, uh, and of course, the issue of uh, Vietnam at the time. Um, but 72 was really critical because um, it put the issue of economy um, on the table with the limits to growth report that was one of the contributions to the 72 conference. And I think, you know, we've 20, uh, 40 years later got back to the same conversation that we kind of kicked off of in 1972. And it's really, um, James Carvalho said, it's the economy stupid. And I think, you know, in the context of changing direction of the unsustainable uh, patterns of consumption that we're um, having at the moment, we need to be able to address the economic uh, levers. You know, uh, the UN Environment Programme was created in 72 first international agency on the environment. The European Union created the second, and then uh, I guess a lot of governments followed suit in creating uh, environmental um, agencies. In fact, I think um, the US was the first with environmental uh, protection agency in 1970 or 71. And in fact, you know, Nixon may go down as one of your greatest green presidents. <laughs> created the EPA, supported the setting up of UNFPA in the, uh, in the United Nations due to the Rockefeller Commission's report. So, uh, yeah, Ray Nixon, <laughs> <laughs> greenie, <laughs> with, of course, Theodore Roosevelt, another green uh, uh, president. But, uh, you know, I'm not sure that the present Republican Party would recognize that. Um, so, you know, important uh, processes started in 72 in addressing uh, environmental issues and the period between 72 and 92 was very much about setting up international global reg regulation and the UN Environment Programme played a critical role as the champion of the environment out there and you know if you look back to the Montreal Protocol on ozone depleting chemicals which came after the Vienna Convention, you look at the work around um, climate change through the first world climate change conference, the second one which um, um, which UNEP and WHMO um, were uh, co-hosting, or even the Canadian conference in 1988, where in fact the US government uh, wasn't, of course, a legally binding thing, signed up to a 20% cut in CO2 emissions by 2005, I think, as a thing. But that was under Reagan and under Thatcher in the UK, where Thatcher was a scientist and actually believed what the scientists told her. Of course, you know, by the time we got to 1992, we had uh, Bush uh, in the White House and the, the viewpoint of uh, climate change has slightly changed, we might say. And, you know, after the 72 conference, we have to realize there was an oil crisis around the uh, Yom Kippur War, and it caused a real big um, problem in the sense of implementing the Stockholm Agreements. After the 92 conference, we had, of course, the first Gulf War, we'd had a breakdown of the Soviet Union, and they played, I think, a critical role in money that had been thought of as the peace dividend actually being spent elsewhere. And where Maurice Strong had been asked how much would it cost to implement Agenda 21, and he'd worked out that it would be $625 billion a year, of which $125 billion would be transferred from north to south. We saw aid flows not increase in the 1990s, but actually decrease. And that was, I think, one of the reasons why 
we weren't able to move forward on a lot of the agenda items mm. that in fact mm. is, are in Agenda 21, which was mm. such a, I think, critical document. And Rio, the original Rio, will go down, I think, as the most significant conference in two or three ways. It will be significant in the sense that it birthed the most global regulation that we've seen. It wasn't just a climate change conference uh, convention, it wasn't just the biodiversity convention, but it also um, uh, saw the setting up of the process for the desertification convention, for the stranding fish stocks convention, and then if you look at chapter, I can't remember the chapter on chemicals, I think it's 20 or 18 or something, mm -hmm. uh, the persistent organic pollutants, the prior informed consent conventions that came in 10 years later, all of the, in a sense, the international regulation that we needed to bring in to address those very important issues was actually there uh, in Agenda 21. But, you know, the great thing, I think, from our perspective, and I kind of take a, a different viewpoint from, and it's a terminology issue uh, in one level, but it's also a philosophical issue. Are we civil society or are we stakeholders? So the Rio process said that there are stakeholders in society, that women should have their own voice, that indigenous peoples should have their own voice, that youth should have their own voice, that farmers should have their own voice. And so it's not civil society discourse, it's a stakeholder discourse. Mm. And so there's been a kind of friction between those that see civil society, which tends to be dominated by northern environmental development groups, mm. um, and the way that the Rio process has done, which has given individual space for different stakeholders. And that was the other success of Rio in 92. It broke the kind of... The, the rules in the UN, it allowed all these stakeholders to come in and have a say. Now initially in Rio itself we weren't allowed into the rooms, but by the time we, two years later, we were in the rooms and we were putting forward ideas. Three years after that in 97, we had dialogues where 12 hours of the negotiating time was put aside for stakeholders to, de to debate with governments about the critical issues that were being discussed at the Commission on Sustainable Development. And that process of stakeholder engagement then went into the Climate Change Convention, went into the Biodiversity Convention, went into the uh, Food uh, and Agriculture Organization through the Food uh, Security uh, Committee. So it's a quite a rich process that Rio in 92 did of giving the, the, the belief that stakeholders need to be involved in the decision making so that governments can make better informed decisions. And we had such high hopes in 2002, uh, leading up to that, of a new grand deal. And I was in some of the informal meetings with then the US government, uh, David Hales, who was the leading person in USAID, and uh, Melinda Kimball at the State Department, about a new global deal. Unfortunately, your election process is a bit strange, and it didn't elect the right president in 2000. So all these ideas of a new global deal on finance which would, in a sense, re-energize the original Rio's uh, promise of actually helping developing countries to make the right decisions in their development processes. And if that had happened, maybe China and India's trajectories on climate change would have been a lot different than they are. And that's the result of not being able to get those agreements. 9-11 had a huge impact on the outcomes from uh, from Johannesburg, and I think um, it took us a long while to rebuild a, a, a kind of positive attitude around sustainable development. And the Commission on Sustainable Development um, had its first failure in 2007 on energy, where it didn't agree anything on energy and climate. Um, we then had uh, Copenhagen in 2009. Sustainable development was dead. I mean, dead as a doornail, as far as most people were concerned. <coughs> but you know, Brazil picked up the baton. I mean. You have to, you know, you have to admire them. Um, Mbeki, President Mbeki had said in 2007 that uh, himself that sustainable development was dead, that Johannesburg was a waste of time and whatever. And so, you know, the President of Brazil picks up the baton and says, okay, we're going to go back in and try and rebuild a whole vision for how we can get through this. And so Rio Plus 20 was about creating that platform again. Uh, that belief that we could put sustainable development at the center of the agenda. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I'm very critical of Kumi and some of the people who, uh, from the NGOs who got off aeroplanes and made comments uh, at Rio. 
when I look at what they submitted to the zero draft, um, they were not that much more different than, in fact, what we were discussing in Rio. So I think one has to be aware that you know, we need to be much more responsible in the kind of uh, language we are and what's expected. Sure, Rio did not address the planetary boundary, but it put the planetary boundary conversation on the table. Mm. It put the donut on the table, the Oxfam mm. donut of you know, the planetary boundaries of the mm. social foundation. That's now a part of the narrative that is being discussed. It gave space for the scientists to completely reorganize their whole uh, process. So they're now merging their platforms into this new Future Earth platform so that scientists can give really positive um, ideas to the politicians about what needs to be done and the politicians can less and less play the scientists off against each other. Mm -hmm.